Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones of Oz, and here is your detailed forecast update for Saturday, the 22nd of February 2025. A lot to get through in today's forecast update, including an outlook on the tropical cyclone that's expected to form over in the Coral Sea, interesting developments over in Western Australia as well, and a look at the long range rainfall forecast for North, Central, and Southeast Queensland. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing, but let's get stuck straight into things this morning over with a look at the Coral Sea. Interesting developments over here overnight as well. This system is now much more organised and on the cusp of becoming a fully fledged tropical low. You can see gale force winds now at Willis Island here, 59 kilometres an hour, nearly gale force I should say, gusting up to about 70 to 75 kilometres an hour. And the rainfall patterns here around the radar imagery looking very, very healthy this morning. This system has developed a lot nicer than I expected it to. I didn't really expect it to develop into a fully fledged tropical low for a good couple of uh, hours still, probably until about tomorrow evening or even in towards Monday morning. I didn't expect it to become a tropical low or even a tropical cyclone, but this system is now well on the way to becoming a fully fledged tropical cyclone. This is some rapid development here and is looking like a really healthy system. So it's now very important that those in the Coral Sea start to pay some really close attention to this system over the coming couple of days. The rainfall has also been piping up along the uh, far north Queensland coastline around the Casper Coast. We've had some pretty significant rainfall accumulations there overnight, with falls averaging between 50 and 150 millimetres, and the heavy rain expected to continue throughout the remainder of today. Let's just jump straight into the forecast right now because, again, interesting development elements all around. It's expected to remain a small system and it's in a very favourable environment right now. So it certainly looks like intensification is all but guaranteed at this time throughout the uh, remainder of uh, this weekend and into early next week. So let's take a look at what is expected. I'm going to choose to not start off with the East Malaya forecast model today. I'm going to use the GFS forecast model. Now, whilst we have been saying that the GFS is slightly more unreliable considering their call for that Queensland landfall, I'm going to say uh, why I'm using the GFS forecast because it has been the most consistent over the last couple of days. And with a look at the spaghetti forecast, models, which is basically a forecast at where the system is right now with every single track that combines to make the forecast models, because the forecast models are not just one forecast, they're an average of about 50 runs, which is 50 loads of information. So these 50 runs and 50 different tracks that this tropical cyclone has been forecast to take get combined into one, which is what you're looking at right now. But then a look at the spaghetti models, which you can see on screen right now, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, is when you have all of those tracks laid out on one map and you can see that the GFS pretty much in you know, every single run over the last couple of days and every single run this morning in their initialization is calling for this system to head out to sea over in the middle of the Coral Sea, intensify through Monday and Tuesday and out towards Wednesday where we see this storm approaching a peak intensity of around Category 2, maybe even Category 3 strength severe tropical cyclone status mm -hmm. before Thursday and Friday making a turn towards the Queensland coastline and then as a weak tropical cyclone making landfall in the last day of February or the first day of March around the Mackay area. Now this forecast has been very consistent consistent over the last couple of days. And I'm not saying that a landfall on Queensland is going to happen at this time. It's certainly still a case of watch but don't act. But in the next couple of days, what this system does is going to play a major role in where this system is going to landfall. If it stays relatively close to the Queensland coastline, I believe the cutoff for this system is going to be around here, uh, just towards the south of the final islands of PNG. If this system's low pressure system moves further out to sea than this sort of area here, and then we find it over here, then the landfall on Queensland becomes very unlikely. But if this system remains on the Queensland side of things in the Coral Sea, then it looks like that landfall on Queensland is going to become a very possible situation here. So we're going to have to watch this very, very closely indeed. And I'm not for a second saying that it is now panic stations for the central Queensland coastline. I'm just saying that this is probably now the most reliable forecast that we have to look at, the GFS forecast model, considering it has been the most consistent and it also is, long term speaking, one of the most reliable forecast models that we have. In terms of the immediate future for this system, just minor impacts along the Queensland coastline, of course, I mean, we're still seeing those showers and storms and I guess I should have started the video off with that but there's really nothing worth talking about. This system is starting to drag its impacts away from the Queensland coastline and if it is not to miss Queen, if it is to miss Queensland uh, from a landfall sometime in the first couple of days of March in terms of impacts there's going to be nothing else to talk about for the Queensland coastline. You can see on the East Malaya forecast model taking the system out to sea and again it does kind of it move further out to sea than that threshold that we're talking about. Not by much but you can see the East Malaya then taking it down towards Norfolk Island and in the East Malaya for the last couple of days has had it stalling halfway between Brisbane and New Caledonia. In fact, a little bit closer to the Brisbane side of things, we may see a cyclonic approach to the Queensland coastline into the kind of first weekend of uh, March by the looks of things, sometime around the 6th or the 7th of the month, uh, which would be a pretty interesting scenario here and a major discrepancy between the GFS forecast model and considering that other forecast models as well are now starting to come on board a little bit nicer with what the GFS has to say. I mean, the Axis is a very bad forecast model to use pretty much 99% of the circumstances because it can be such an overestimate, but even 
even the Axis is now calling for a landfall somewhere on Queensland or a very close pass on the 1st of March, which is exactly what the GFS is calling for, more or less. I mean, give or take a couple of days. The forecast for this developing tropical low has been incredibly murky and very, very hard to make sense of over the last couple of days, and I thought we would have answers by around now. In terms of my forecast, and this is my hunch here for the system, it's going to be very similar to the GFS forecast model, and whilst it is irresponsible for me to be giving a proper detailed forecast uh, this far out in the tropical cyclone's future, I mean, we're still talking about a landfall potential, uh, potentially for around eight days out into the future. I do now expect a weak tropical cyclone to approach the Queensland coastline somewhere between Mackay down to Bundaberg. Whether the landfall's on Mackay or whether it's a little bit further south, there will be a couple of days between that. I reckon I'll have a definitive answer on that by Monday. But at this time, over the next couple of days, there is no need to be watching the weather closely. It's just a case of keep checking in on the forecast, keep checking in on what's expected and watch it quite closely here and there. But there's no need to pay close attention to it for the next couple of days at least and really get into a panic about it. There is no need to prepare for a tropical cyclone impact on Queensland at this time. If you do have any questions or comments on this system, please be sure to reach out to me on Messenger. I'd be more than happy to help you out over there. Again, this is a very confusing forecast. I understand why there's a lot of confusion out there, a lot of discrepancies here uh, in the forecast. And I understand why people are confused if they're checking in on a forecast three days ago and then it's a complete flip-flop and a turn on its head for what it is now today because that's what it's been here. Even on the Cyclones Oz channel, every single forecast has had some pretty major changes in it. And I imagine that will happen over the coming couple of days. Now, for those concerned just about this system over in Queensland, they don't want the fluff that these videos often bring with them, check back in with me on Tuesday and I'll have a definitive answer. If this system does turn for the Queensland coastline, A, it's likely to be a weak system. We're not going to be talking about a severe tropical cyclone or stronger at this time, at least on the forecast. And B, it's also likely to give plenty of notice if it is going to come knocking on Queensland. We'll have plenty of time to prepare and warn appropriately for the areas on Queensland that are likely to be impacted. It's not going to go to Townsville either. I mean, we can pretty much discount that as a possibility. Whilst the spaghetti models are taking it as far north as Townsville, it is highly unlikely that this system gets itself up there. If this system does make a landfall as well, rainfall will be a significant threat from this system, considering it will be slow moving a little bit broader as well. And regardless of if this tropical cyclone does make an approach towards the Queensland coastline, we are likely to see some really significant rainfall accumulation somewhere along the Queensland coastline into the first week of March, because this system will be in the vicinity and it will be throwing ashore quite a lot of rainfall. And you can see between all major forecast models, with the GFS having a landfall, of course the rainfall is where the landfall site is expected to be, but the Eastman Bef and the Axis forecast model are both calling for significant accumulations into South Central and the southeastern corners of Queensland. Now, of course, I'm not going to be calling any shots on that either. I mean, that's a really big call to be making from those forecast models, especially so far out, so don't get your hopes up for that at all right now. But regardless of where the system goes, if it does make a close approach to Queensland, which is pretty much guaranteed at this time, we'll likely be seeing some really significant rainfall accumulations. And you can see just how wacky the access can be at times. I mean, look at these rainfall accumulations out here, up to 2,000 millimetres. So some really significant falls are possible around the core of the system, but it does go to show you that the access can call for some pretty wacky things at times. And it's certainly a forecast model to take with a very heavy pinch of salt nine times out of 10 at least in terms of tropical cyclones, in terms of rainfall, it can do a really good job sometimes. But yeah, certainly some heavy showers and storms developing in this tropical low right now. It's looking really healthy this morning. I'm really happy uh, to see a tropical low beginning to develop. And I'm not saying that in a condescending way towards Queensland, but it's imperative that we get a good forecast out. And it looks like it's going to become very clear throughout the course of today and into tomorrow as well. I'm imagining twice daily forecast update is going to return to the Cyclone Oz channel from tomorrow as well on this Coral Sea tropical low system. It's very important that that information does get itself out there as much as possible. But yeah, in terms of the conditions ahead of this system, there is not a lot standing in its way, not at least for the next couple of days. It's going to have plenty of warm seas temperatures to uh, make the most of, but then as it gets a little bit further south down towards Mackay, and especially if it does go in towards Rockhampton, sea temperatures are a little bit cooler, and that's why we're expecting the system to come ashore as a weak tropical cyclone. If it does come ashore, it's not likely to be a strong tropical cyclone. Definitely not talking anything stronger than about Category 4 or 5 status. I mean, that is a wacky scenario, at least even for Mackay, but we're not talking about an apocalyptic tropical cyclone here. It'll just be a run-of-the-mill Queensland tropical cyclone. Plenty of rainfall and some strong winds. Nothing to be worried about right now. Questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section and below. I'd be more than happy to help you out down there as well. But yeah, absolutely nothing to be panicking about. I don't want anyone to be stressed or worried about this tropical cyclone impact that hasn't even formed yet. This is just a forecast and it's just being put out there to inform the masses. That's uh, all that my intention is right now over at the Cyclone Source channel. 
let's head over towards Western Australia and I'm going to have to eat my hat here on this tropical low that's developing offshore from WA. I mean, I didn't think there's anything standing in the way from this tropical low. I mean, there really isn't, to be honest. I mean, it doesn't look like wind shear is impacting the system too much, but it is a stubborn, stubborn storm this is. North of Exmouth right now, it's moving along quite nicely into the Indian Ocean and is now hardly expected to become a significant tropical cyclone at all. I'm still putting my money on this becoming a severe tropical cyclone at some point in its life. I mean, I really don't see a world where this doesn't become a severe tropical cyclone, just given the conditions that it has ahead of it. You can see the axis calling for it to develop nicely through today, becoming a tropical cyclone by the looks of things sometime tomorrow evening. I thought that that would happen today, and then it has. And then as it heads a little bit further south, it starts to intensify through Monday and Tuesday. If we get a really quick run of intensification through Monday and Tuesday, it's likely to reach severe tropical cyclone status by Tuesday evening, and then as it makes its turn towards the southwest corner of WA before it perishes offshore from WA down there, it looks like it will weaken off very substantially as it makes that extra tropical transition. But yeah, I didn't think there'd be anything standing in the way of this tropical cyclone, and truth be told, there really isn't, considering wind shear right now, especially in the mid-levels, isn't looking too bad for this system, unless the forecast models have been uh, fooling me royally. But yeah, they look the wind shear looks pretty good, at least in the mid-levels. It's found itself between the jet stream and all that tropical wind shear uh, over Western Australia and Indonesia, respectively. And then if you go into the upper levels, wind shear is, as well as looking pretty healthy for the system. There's an upper level anti-cyclone right now. It could be a little bit too high for this system, maybe. I mean, it looks like it's pushing about 20 to 25 knots around this system center. So I guess it maybe is a little bit too high for this tropical cyclone to rapidly develop it, especially over the coming couple of days. Uh, as we get towards Monday and Tuesday, it's really going to find itself into some pretty good environmental conditions. And I reckon it's going to have a really good run of intensification through Monday and Tuesday. So whilst a severe tropical cyclone is certainly not off the cards here, when I was saying that Category 5 system is pretty much guaranteed, well, not guaranteed, but it is very likely from this system, considering there is not an awful lot of uh, bad weather standing in the way of this system's uh, track, I'm going to have to go back on those words there and say, yep, I was wrong. We're definitely not looking at a Category 5 strength tropical cyclone developing here, and this is pretty good. This is pretty much going to be a lackluster tropical cyclone to track offshore from Western Australia. A very disappointing system, that's for sure. I mean, a lot of people get very excited for a relatively strong tropical cyclone here that they could track and have a bit of fun with, and it doesn't look like that's going to happen here. It will still likely beat the Queensland system to attaining tropical cyclone status, at least with what the forecast is suggesting right now, but it's going to be very close, that's for sure. Tropical cyclone alpha it could go either way over in Queensland, over in Western Australia. I mean, if this system even gets to tropical cyclone status, that's for sure. One thing I would like to say as well as I've waffled on for this system for a couple of minutes right now, you can hear the anger in my voice, I can imagine, uh, that this system is no threat to the West Australian coastline either. Nothing to the Kimberley, nothing to the Pilbara, nothing to the Gascoigne, nothing to the Murchison. And as we pull this forecast forward into the first, uh, or into the, into the dying days rather, of February and the 26th and, and the 27th, we will see the remnant energy make an approach to the West Australian coastline, but it's going to feel like a sea breeze more or less with the peak winds averaging 50 to 55 kilometers an hour and gusts up to about 75 kilometers an hour. That's nothing significant. West Australia gets it pretty much every night between November and April, so really nothing significant, nothing worth writing home about. And in terms of the rainfall, either really little rainfall accumulations can be expected as well from this uh, tropical cyclone as it approaches the WA coastline. We will likely see some showers late on Wednesday night into Thursday morning. That could bring the odd storm to the Perth metro area and into the southwest corners of WA just as a whole. And you can see that's reciprocated between other forecast models as well. Depending on how close this gets to the WA coastline, if it is a really close pass, we'll likely be seeing a pretty increased amount of rainfall and thunderstorm activity Wednesday night into Thursday morning. The axis is really fond of some pretty significant falls, not significant falls, but some proper rainfall around the southwest corner of WA. And even the Icon forecast model, which is one that we rarely use on this channel here, is also fond of a couple of millimetres of rainfall here and there. But in terms of rainfall accumulations, do not get your hopes up at all. It'll be a couple of millimetres at best around the southwest corner. I mean, the axis this is kind of calling for peak rainfall accumulations to be around that 20 to 25 millimetre mark, which will be the best rainfall that a lot of these locations have picked up in a couple of months, but still rainfall accumulations between 0 and 20 millimetres is what's going to be expected across the southwest corner of Western Australia, and nothing in the way of rainfall expected for the central west coast, either up around Geraldton or into the Murchison region, even as this tropical low makes its uh, crossing of the Abrolhos Islands and is right offshore, basically knocking on the WA coastline. We're not expecting any significant rainfall out there because it will be basically a carcass of a tropical cyclone by that time. Well, that's enough tropical talk, that's for sure, in terms of the tropical cyclones over in WA and Queensland. Interesting stuff, that's for sure, over uh, on both sides of the continent. It's uh, interesting stuff and keeping us on our toes as a track. Lots of changes in the forecast this morning, uh, which is a little bit embarrassing as a forecast, but again, sometimes you just got to admit that you're wrong. Let's head over towards Queensland now and talk about the long-range rainfall situation, where I'm pretty sure that I'm right, at least in terms of the very long-range forecast as well. Rainfall will continue along the far north Queensland coastline throughout the coming couple of days, especially throughout today and 
into tomorrow as this tropical it develops offshore. But in terms of rainfall, at least over the next week, there's not an awful lot to be talking about, not an awful lot to write home about across much of the Queensland coastline. A few showers here and there around the wet Sundays, but in terms of the really long range forecast, it is where it starts to become a little bit more colourful. It really does depend on if this tropical load does make a close approach to the Queensland coastline, let alone a landfall. But if this makes a, clo a close approach, wherever the close approach is, we'll be seeing some significant rainfall accumulations around uh, that area, up to between 100 and 300 millimetres, and potentially a little bit more isolated totals up to about 500 millimetres. And you can see it here on between the forecast models, the highest rainfall accumulations on the GFS will obviously be a lot higher than what they're suggesting here, up to about 250, 300 millimetres. We'll likely be seeing falls up to about 400 millimetres there if that was a landfall. The Eastern Bluffs highest numbers uh, around uh, Fraser Island are about 700 millimetres here, 650 to 700 millimetres. And even the Axis, which is calling for some uh, close pass stuff on Fraser Island, we're expecting falls up to about 250 millimetres. And once there is a broad scope of uncertainty, there's a good 250 millimetres of rain coming in pretty much every situation and every scenario here. So again, if this system does make a close approach to Queensland, we'll be seeing some really significant rainfall accumulations and certainly something worth keeping in the back of your head right now. Again, watch but don't panic. I think that's going to be the saying, the channel motto over the coming couple of days. In terms of the really long range stuff though, we'll likely be seeing a return to the wet season stuff much later on into the forecast period. We'll be looking uh, kind of about early to mid-March at that point where we start to see the rainfall begin to pipe up across the South Pacific Islands. You can see around uh, March 8th actually there's plenty of rainfall around Fiji enough towards some of the islands through here. There's going to be plenty of rainfall there. Also plenty of tropical cyclone activity throughout the next week and a half across the South Pacific Ocean. And then this rainfall is going to be associated with the Madden Julian Oscillation which is slowly going to be heading across towards Vanuatu, the Solomon Islands and then on towards Queensland with the next MJO is expected to arrive sometime in the into the second week of March, probably around the 13th to the 14th of March at this point is what the forecasts are tipping and we'll likely be seeing high energy periods follow in the wake of that system, which means plenty more rainfall for North Queensland and likely another week or week and a half of some really significant falls here and there, uh, coinciding with the monsoonal burst as well. That will be the same for the Northern Territory, just following in a couple of days and then that same deal for Western Australia as well. We normally see the wet season die off a little bit for Western Australia come around mid-March and towards late March, those thunderstorms start to become a bit fewer and further between, uh, but it is going to be a return to storm season as well across the subtropical zones of Western Australia and across towards New South Wales and into southeast Queensland as well. Those thunderstorm days are going to be into return as we get towards late March and into early April. So another thing to get excited for: the long-range forecast certainly is going to isn't going to be disappointing across Australia, uh, which is going to be very exciting to track. And I imagine a lot of people very excited to see some more rainfall, some more tropical cyclones as well here and there offshore from WA and Queensland, and more thunderstorms as well across the southeast of Queensland into the northeast of New South Wales. It's been a lacklustre storm season so far, apart from the first couple of months, which were bumper months. But over the last couple of months, nothing really to write home about, apart from a significant thunderstorm last night uh, around the Tweed Heads area. But in terms of more severe thunderstorm activity, it will be coming through thick and fast pretty shortly. That's for sure. Not long now until we get into the second burst of storm season. That's enough waffle on the long range forecast. I do hope it's made sense. If it hasn't, then flick me a message over on Messenger or leave a comment for me in the comment section down below. That is all for me today. A special shout out of course to the channel sponsors the names are on screen right now and their support is much appreciated without them i couldn't be uh, upgrading the computer systems that we're now upgrading to here at the cyclones Oz channel plenty more uh, good stuff to come and hopefully the videos are out faster and of a much higher quality than they have been as of late but that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye